automobiles started a revolution in American life, reshaping the cities, reorienting the economy, overturning traditional habits of travel and social behavior. Now in the 1960s, there's been another revolution so fast and far-reaching we've barely noticed it. But it too has altered our cities, reoriented our economy, and in less than seven years, the jet airplane has not only revolutionized America, but the entire world as well. So welcome to the jet age. And fasten your seat belts because the sky's the market and the business ceiling unlimited. When this day is done, one quarter of a million Americans will have made flights within the United States. Another one million people throughout the world will have taken to the air in their individual races against the sun. In every major city of the world, the jet has brought new jobs, new facilities, new services, a new way to think of time and distance. The jet has revolutionized the world of the tourist. The efficiency in jet flight is bringing with it new techniques and efficiencies in ground services. Ticketing has been computerized without sacrificing human courtesy. Behind the ticket counter is the only world the modern traveler rarely visits. But this unseen world is the modern magic carpet that wings the passenger swiftly and safely to his seat and his destination. For the millions of new passengers who have learned to fly, there's a very important reason why it's been love at first flight. We've become accustomed to living it up up high. There's even after-dinner entertainment. Jet age stewardesses must be quick change artists. So are many of the modern airliners.
Today, which also means tonight, 12 and a half million ton miles of cargo will be carried by the airlines of the world. By the early 1970s, revenue from air freight may exceed that from passengers. Hundreds of business jets now fly in the United States. Deliveries of these craft can be expected to increase each year. To meet the constantly rising demand for more passenger and cargo capacity, there's a whole new generation of airplanes, already delivered or to be delivered throughout the next decade. Stretched DC-8s already offer greater payload, longer range, and higher speed. The 737 and the DC-9 make twin jet service available to the short-haul market. The C-5 Galaxy, the largest plane in the world, will carry 900 troops or 110 tons of cargo 3,500 miles. The 747, to carry up to 500 passengers, will be two and one-half times larger than today's jets and 30% more economical to operate. Hailed as the plane for the 70s is the Airbus, designed for 250 passengers and more, serving high-density routes. And the United States supersonic transport will carry 300 passengers at 1,800 miles per hour, twice the capacity and three times the speed of today's jets and at competitive costs. The greatest single result of the jet revolution has been that nowadays, everybody's flying. Not just the believers of the jet set, or the businessmen, but everybody. And for the new generation of airplanes, there's a big new generation of passengers. A generation that has grown up with the jets, and the idea that the only way is to fly. Since 1961, air travel around the world has been growing by 13 and one half percent per year. The volume will double by 1970, triple by 1975. Last year, domestic airliners carried 114 million passengers. By 1970, 168 million. Last year, the airlines on the North Atlantic run carried almost 5 million passengers. By 1970, there will be 8 million. By 1975, 15 million. In the last 10 years, the value of commercial airliners produced in the United States totaled a little over $8 billion. In the next 10 years, total production will reach $40 billion. For commercial transports are not only getting bigger and faster, safer and more comfortable, they are also, with each new generation, becoming more economical to operate. And this greater profitability designed into each new model is a prime ingredient in the formula that will keep this market expanding indefinitely. Today, the Roar Corporation is participating in virtually all the major multi-engine transport aircraft programs, building power plant assemblies, fuselage sections, pylons, thrust reversers, stabilizers and elevators, cargo doors, and the many other parts that together have contributed to Roar's role as the leading subcontractor in the aircraft industry. And Roar is ready for tomorrow, ready with expanded facilities, and advanced manufacturing technologies, including greater reliance on computers for increased efficiency and production. Roar is ready, too, with numerically controlled machines, 
with computer control of work in process, parts flow, and storage, and with advanced facilities and techniques for welding, brazing, bonding, and forming. Responding too to the growth demands of the forthcoming decade, Rohr has already strengthened and expanded its engineering force and developed new research data in such areas as thrust reversal and jet engine acoustics. For only an organization with extensive facilities, a dedication to advanced technology, and the ability to participate both financially and technically can become a partner in the vast and complex aircraft programs of tomorrow. In the next decade, the sky's the market, and Roar is ready to respond to that new market and to expand with it.